your Jacob's ladder one, the four sections of the narrow way. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets, Revelation 10 to 7 Let us begin this message in the name of the Lord, here are five truths which we have already explained under the sermon spirit, soul, and body flame on the sea of glass, 1, the three manifestations of the Almighty are, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 2, you are created in the image of the Almighty and also born of Him, and you do have these three manifestations, spirit, soul and body, 3, your spirit, which is created with the fire of the Father, resides up in heaven with the Father, upon the sea of glass, 4, your body, which is created with the living water of the Holy Spirit, resides down here on earth with the Holy Spirit, inside his living water temple, 5, and finally, your soul, which is created with the blood of the Son, has lots of resting places, but no fixed place where it resides, it travels back and forth with the Son, between your body that is here on earth, and your spirit that is up in heaven Amen, Jacob's ladder, and Jacob dreamed, and behold a ladder set up on the earth, and the trop of it reached to heaven, and behold the angels of God ascending and descending on it, and, behold, the Lord stood above it, Genesis 28 verse 12 to 13 Here is how we shall define Jacob's ladder in this sermon It is a ladder which the Almighty placed between heaven above, and upon the earth below, at the exact spot where Jacob was resting, now. We do know that the Lord did not need that ladder in order to reach Jacob, neither did the angels, so here are three simple questions which we should ask ourselves, 1, what do you believe was the reason why the Lord placed the foot of the ladder exactly at the spot where Jacob was? 2, what do you believe was the indirect signal which the angels were trying to beckon, send to Jacob by moving in this order, ascending and descending, and not the other way around? Three. Do you believe Jacob got that message? If not, what do you believe were the reason why he missed it? We shall revisit these questions later ahead in this series, so please hold on to them, the narrow way, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it, Matthew 7:14. Here is how we shall define the narrow way in this sermon, it is a path which the Almighty has established between heaven above and upon the earth below, at the exact spot where you are, even as you are reading this sermon, Hallelujah! Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Isaiah 66 to 1 And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight, Acts 1 to 9 And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven, Acts 1 verse 10 11 again, we do know that the Lord did not need an upward lift and clouds covering to escape gravity and reach heaven, we also know that the Lord had already told the disciples that he was going to return through the clouds, this means the angels did not show up just for the purpose of repeating what the disciples had already been told, so again, here are three simple questions which we should ask ourselves, 1, what do you believe was the reason why the Lord used an upward lift to demonstrate how to enter heaven, right in the sight of the disciples? 2, what do you believe was the indirect signal which the angels were trying to communicate to you and I and all disciples by using these key phrases? taken up into heaven and return in like manner, similar to the ascending, descending order the angels demonstrated before Jacob. 3. If Jacob and the disciples did not get those messages, it is understandable, since they heard it once, but you and I who have been reading it over and over in our Bibles, have we gotten that message yet? And if not, what do you believe is, are our reasons for missing it? Again, we shall revisit these questions later in this series so please hold on to them, wonderful is the word of our God. And it shall come to pass in the last days, that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it, and many people shall go and say, Come ye, 
and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. Isaiah 2 verse 3 4 Dear reader, the purpose of this series is to help you fulfill the scripture you just read, so please make sure you understand them very well, thank you, praise God, according to the word, if the believer is not walking on the narrow way, and if his name is not in the Lamb's book of life, heaven does not recognize or number him among the living, that is a very heartbreaking truth. This means if there are any two things which Satan never wants the believer to prioritize and work on every single minute, then they are the narrow way and the book of life, that is why he has designed the systems of the world to ensure they quietly, secretly and strategically erase the perception of their existence, importance completely out of the mind of every single soul, that is also why the narrow way and the book of life are the least talked, preached about subjects, even in most churches and that is why part of the calling of Holy Ghost Army is to strategically fill up your focus and attention with the existence, reality of the narrow way and the necessity for you to walk on it, in order for your name to remain written in the book of life, description of the narrow way, since it is a way that connects your entire life down here on earth, and all the way up, to heaven where the throne of God is located, then it means we can use the following five truths to describe it. 1. It begins, starts here on earth, and it ends at the throne of our Heavenly Father, upon the sea of glass. 2. The beginning section runs through and upon the various terrains of the earth, it is the section on which your body conducts your calling, let us call it the ground section. 3. From the ground, it continues upwards, through the skies, as the disciples witnessed Christ ascend on it, this is the middle section, and since it points upwards like a ladder, let us call it the ladder, 4, since the earth and heaven are separated by two regions called the first heaven where the clouds are, and the second heaven where the devils are, it means the first section of the ladder runs through the first heaven, let us call this the first heaven section of the ladder, also, since the second section runs through the second heaven, let us call this the second heaven section of the ladder, 5, the final section runs through the straight gate upon the golden streets of heaven and upon the sea of glass, it is the section on which your spirit walks and conducts its official duties in heaven, even as you are still reading this, let us call it the paradise section, praise the Lord. The two purposes of the narrow way here is the first one, to lead you to paradise, now, after Satan and his devils fail to prevent you from walking on it, they move to their next plan, which is, to make you think of it as some figurative highway, and become completely oblivious of its second and equally important purpose, which is this, to train you rigorously to become like Christ, again, the second purpose of the narrow way is to train you rigorously to become like Christ, and here is why it is very dangerous for a believer who is walking on the narrow way to lack the knowledge about the second purpose. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, Carest thou not that we perish? Mark 4:38. Every time the Lord approves a trial for a believer to go through as part of his training program, the believer begins to see it as a tragedy that he doesn't deserve to suffer, and for God to sit idle to allow that to happen, it means he had not cared enough for him, and once Satan steers his understanding to view God that way, he orders his devils to quickly start filling his heart with grievances and murmurings, and these devils don't stop there. No, not at all. They would send him on a help-seeking chase after all kinds of prophets, spiritualists, who would drain him of his money, resources, in exchange for all kinds of directions, with some holy water to help quench his urgent thirst for a solution, and with some holy oils to lubricate the confusion between his grievances and his murmurings against God, the believer would spend weeks online, offline chasing these prophets whereas he could spend a few days in his own prayer closet to seek God about the matter, and apply the Holy Ghost power called endurance if it is a problem he is supposed to endure, or, to apply his power, mighty and authority in Christ to bind and cast out devils, if it is a problem that requires that, so you see, his lack of knowledge about the second purpose, is the key reason, culprit why it has become so difficult for him to receive any form of spiritual training and that is also why he may end up in paradise as untrained and woefully unfit, 
unworthy to inherit his glorious administrative office which his heavenly Father has prepared for him, the Lord is not pleased at all about this problem, his suffering and death was, is to produce, birth children, kings who would reign with him, and not untrained souls who are only qualified to spend all eternity playing in the beautiful parks and gardens of heaven, that is why he is commanding you and I to wake up, apply the grace to heal our eyes, learn and know the truth, so that we can begin to see things in his light, and not in the false light and lies which the Broadway pastors had sold to us in the past, so then, the first purpose of the narrow way is to lead you to heaven. Let us go over its detailed spiritual definitions, and then explain how it fulfills its purpose to lead you, its spiritual definitions it is the way, the truth and the life, it leads your spirit, soul and body to Christ, who himself is the way, the truth and the life, the way, what it is this is simply the word, will of God on which every place you go, everything you do, every word you speak, every thought, conception, decision you make, are based and must also follow, the way, what it does it leads you to heaven, and it makes who you are and your entire life to glorify God, the truth, what it is this is simply the word, light of God that shines around, upon and within you, the truth, what it does it gives you the ability to see and put a clear distinction, separation between the clean, holy and the unclean, unholy, the life, what it is this is simply the word, energy of God that keeps everything you do, every word you speak, every thought, conception and decision, alive and living, the life, what it does it injects, infuses divine power into your spiritual muscles, nervous systems, thinking capacities, speech, communication structuring, behavior patterns, operational abilities, etc., in order to systematically uproot, eliminate your entire mortal nature called you slash self and plant in its place the immortal perfect nature of Christ, so, again, the second purpose of the narrow way is to train you rigorously to become like Christ, here is another way of explaining this second purpose to offer you the grace, the time, mercy and opportunity to learn by practice how to use the word, prayer and fasting to dominate your own flesh, worldliness, and all devils, and equally importantly, do so in holiness, and in power and in the partaking of the sufferings of the cross of Calvary, also known as fulfilling your calling in Christ, so far, we have divided the narrow way into four different, connected sections which are, ground, first heaven, second heaven and paradise sections, now, to help us easily understand this sermon, let us also divide your entire training program on the narrow way into four different, connected training levels, and if we do that, here is what we arrive at, 1, ground level training, 2, first heaven level training, 3, second heaven level training, 4, paradise level training. Please get this clear, there are infinite levels of trainings under each of these four levels, we have grouped the entire training into four, just to help us explain and understand the message, also, Please take note of this the level of administrative office slash complex slash position which the Lord shall assign you in heaven, and how close he shall set your throne to his throne to reign with him, is determined by the levels of training you receive and pass, during your days here on earth, once your race on earth is over and you land in heaven, your level shall be fixed forever, again, it can never be changed for all of eternity, similar to how all levels in heaven including the angelic hierarchy, are set and fixed, this means the gracious God has given you a once in eternal lifetime to set your own level, a beyond golden opportunity which Satan and his devils tried to seize, but were denied, and were cast out of heaven, so now you see why any time the Lord permits trials to come your way. These devils would work so hard to make you complain slash grieve slash murmur against God and also deceive you to always view your trials with your physical eyes, so that you can see, perceive each trial for what it is not, instead of what it truly is. The time for us to reap and of this habit is now. The gentle calls and careful persuasions for us to grow in Christ have changed and become a loud trumpet blast, a command and a mandate. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind, 
and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, Philippians 3 colon 13 14 The scripture you just read were the words of an apostle who, after attaining a level that is over a million times higher than what is even known to the church of this age, chose not to settle there, but to keep pressing on further and further, 